All right. I'm Ingrid Malmsteen. We're here today to, to talk a little bit about guitar playing, fast, slow, whatever, and enjoy. That's the, like there's a. It's like there's basically just a scale, but you go, they do, they do, they do, you know, it goes all over. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going for from very early on. And in other words, the whole reason, the whole reason I, I play the way I play is because I wanted to go away from this guitar player playing this and, and everybody listened to him. And they, they do their way of doing that, and by, like on it goes, you know. And uh, I, I wanted to challenge myself mainly, you know, with uh, trying to play some crazy stuff that was done on violin, you know, which is yeah. a different instrument, you know. Yeah. And they, they, they tune in fifths, so like really widespread scales are that's what they did, you know, because it's like A is shorter scale and it's done in fifth. So like you move your fingers less and all of a sudden a lot more happens, you know. So it's a bit of a challenge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's what I dug, you know, and I still do. And uh, so the main reason, I, as much as I love the blues, the main reason I went away from it was because I felt that that was boxed in and I wanted to break out of that. So that was um, the natural progression for me to do then would be to to play you know which is I guess you would call a harmonic minor like that or if you invert that from A minor to E minor that would be Phrygian which is just saying relative scales and also with the, the major third it's perfect because it links together with the diminished which is that it, it links it together perfectly, you know, so you can mix and match them, throw together how, as, a, any way you like. Okay, when you do it on all the strings, it might be a little more complicated, but if you learn it first just on one string, if you learn that form, like that form, how, how you start with, with on one string, You know, those, then all of a sudden, oh, that makes sense, and you can play the same note on different strings, right. and it, just a little thought process, you know. The E Phrygian would be... And the exact same notes in A minor harmonic would be... Augmented seventh. In that particular key, it's called augmented seventh. In E would be the, uh, major third. You want to link them together with the third in the Phrygian diminished. And all of a sudden you have all those three things perfectly together. And it's very much sort of the bread and butter of what I do, you know, for my own thing, you know. And um, then, then of course you could use, you can make these things into all sorts of different patterns, you know, for instance, you could skip the notes in the scale and just do forms like like that yeah, yeah. start here you could do it like the the the, the, the diminished again for, and link it together Okay, that's two strings. We can do a three string. I never forget the first time I went to Japan, like 25 years ago. They started asking me, "How do you do this? How do you do that?" And I go, "I don't know, man." <laughs> you know, all I knew was when I started out. I'll tell you what happened. What I what I knew, and everybody thinks like I'm completely full of it when I say this, but this is the truth. They asked me for advice. I go, play with the ears. Play with the ears. When it sounds good, it's good. If it sounds good, it's good. If you and you good ears, you'll know when it's good, yeah? 
And I knew that I, I didn't want to play and it's to make it like that. I wanted it to be note for note clean, you know? Right, right. And I, I wasn't thinking about what I was doing, but I knew what I wanted to hear. Right. And I was working on it very hard until I got what I, what I wanted, you know? It's the same thing as like if you do like a lick like this, legato, which is legato is a great, this, we're talking about picking. Legato is a beautiful thing in this. My favorite legato player, of course, is Holdsworth, you know. Uh, it's amazing. But legato is a great thing because you go. You have that tone, right? Or you can do with a pick and then you have a different tone. So all of a sudden you have the two choices, which is. You can make, mix and the cigar stack out the legato like. On the, on the bottom, low ones, it all sound a little cooler, more staccato, you know? Like that, you know, and they go. You know, stuff like that. Sounds cool, you know. That's, that's why I'm going for the whatever comes out sounding bitching, you know. You know, that's what arpeggios like. Was dramatic, you know, oh, drama, you know. Are you just doing straight alternate picking uh, when you're oh, on this? Not, not when I go to different strings. What do you do? Uh, I don't know. Actually, look. I don't <laughs> haven't looked at that, but that uh, we can look at it. I, when I just play like that, I don't, I don't think about what I'm doing. I'm just right. playing whatever it takes, what note is. For the lower thing, I think it's like kind of like this. But when I go to the next string, it has to be like uh, different. Yeah. thing where you look like you either pull a pick, pick back or uh, when you do when you do move over to the other string I know you just play <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny because that reminds me of that. I used to have a bass play a long time ago <laughs> he used to look at my picking hands like he's like looks like you're knitting <laughs> It's a little bit of a violin technique, it's called pixicato. Mm -hmm. You actually make the note with your left hand. Mm -hmm. Like that, mm -hmm. you know? That's without it, this is with it. So, so it's a mixture of actually doing this. Yeah. 